Wow, okay, so just like in previous episodes, guys, you ask and you shall receive. We just got an awesome coin. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to CoinQuest. CoinQuest, of course, is a series where I take $25 boxes of pennies like this one, and I go through them looking for interesting and valuable coins that I can use to fill in this book right here. So this right here is going to be our sixth box out of eight in the series, and we've already filled up about 56% of this album. It's getting harder and harder to find coins for this album, but hopefully we can find some today. Now to aid us in our penny roll hunting today, we have this coin roll hunting placemat, which I designed, and you can actually find these for sale on my website at quinscoins.com. I'll put that down here. I'll put it up here, wherever it shows up, and I'll also put a link down in the description below if you want to get one of these for yourself. Basically, it shows you all of the different types of coins that you can find coin roll hunting. These are the types, and then these are some specialties that you'll find. And then on the back side, we have a score sheet, which you can use to tally up all of the finds that you get in your box. We use these on competition hunts. I also use this score sheet as just a general rating system for the boxes that I go through in this series as well. So as usual with the coin quest episodes, I'm going to start by opening a roll live. So this is the first roll out of today's box. This is box number six out of eight. And I'm going to go ahead and open this roll live on camera for you. I just like to open up the first one to see if uh, we get lucky. And actually, if you look at this one, there is a Canadian right on the end there, uh, which is something I'm going to be getting into a little bit later in the episode. We are looking for Canadian pennies as well. I get tons of them uh, up here in Michigan. So there is that Canadian penny right there. It is a 2000 and uh, I can't remember. They call this a certain name. Uh, I think it's called the diadem. Yeah, that's what, that's what they call it. I don't know what a, what a diadem is, but uh, that's how they name that particular coin. Um, but right now we're going to go through the rest of these here and look and see if we can get anything old. Um, anything that pops out at me, I will let you know if I see anything. And uh, you let me know in the comments if I miss something because it, uh, it does happen from time to time. But uh, guys, it doesn't look like there's going to be anything in that first roll other than that Canadian. So I think that is pretty much going to be it for that roll. Why don't we go ahead and break into the next one and hopefully uh, I'll turn on the camera if I find anything good. All right, guys. So we went quite a while there without actually finding anything of interest. I think I am on the fifth roll now and I just got my first wheat penny. Uh, I pulled it out right there. I sort of looked at the edge and it looked like it was going to be old. Uh, it certainly was. I was right on this one and uh, the wheat side came up first. So you can see that. Uh, it's actually got a nice um, sort of like a, a effect going on there. It might even be uh, what they call a wood grain scent, uh, but it does look a little bit beat up as well, so it's hard to tell right now. I'm going to go ahead and flip this and see what we have for a date here. Okay, so we have a 1946 S, it looks like. So uh, I definitely don't get very many San Francisco mints like that. Um, we might actually need that one in the book now that I think about it because um, that is, you know, it's a 40s and it's an S. And yeah, it looks like we do. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this off the tripod here for a second and we're gonna take a look at the book here. Just flipped it to this page. It looks like we already have the 1946 uh, Philadelphia and the 1946 Denver, but we do not have that 1946 S. So we actually just got our first coin uh, from this box, which is gonna be going into the book right there. That will go right there. And uh, let me just give you one more uh, close up look of that coin uh, because it is a pretty cool looking coin. It's a 1946. San Francisco and if you look at the back it's got that nice uh, wood grain uh, uh, look to it so that's actually a really cool coin I'm happy to get that one why don't we go ahead and look through the rest of this roll just in case it's a, a double wheat penny roll or something like that because um, I haven't even gotten into it at all yet uh, so we'll see if we have anything else so just do a you know a real brief uh, look through here just to see if we can see any uh, wheat ears show up uh, it doesn't look like it uh, oh okay we got a 2009 here that is a professional life I believe and it is a 2009 Denver actually guys we may we may need that one uh, I know I need some of the 2009 so let me flip to that page real quick here and see if that's one of the ones that we need yeah actually it is guys take a look at that so we actually just got two coins that we needed out of this roll right here a 2009 Denver I've been needing these since the first episode I've had such a difficult time finding the 2009 Denvers as you can see there's a whole bunch of different types of 2009s and they're actually uh, if you look at the sheet here this is these are all the different types that you can find we just found that one right there as you can see uh, that one is called professional life so if we look here, it should be the third one in. So right here, that is the one that we need. And if we flip to the back here, you can see that we already have the Philadelphia of that, but we do not have the Denver. So we just got our second coin that we need in the book. That is awesome, guys. Goes right there. And uh, that's awesome. I can't, I don't know what else to say about it. 
Um, and then I think I saw just real quick here, uh, that's a really nice looking 1972 right there. So I'll pull that aside, but we don't need it in the book. Anyways, guys, uh, that is an awesome fifth roll. Let's go ahead and get into the next one. Hopefully we get something else. Okay, so seventh roll now, just a couple rolls later, and we just got ourselves another wheat penny. Uh, this one came wheat side up as well. Oops, almost revealed it there. Uh, it's in very nice shape. You can see that uh, you, the, all those wheat ears are still uh, intact. So this is a nice coin, probably gonna be 50s, uh, but we'll see right here. So 1951 Denver. I gotta check the book for that one. I'm pretty sure we already have it though. Yep, we do already have that one. So a 1951 Denver, that's not gonna go in the book, but it is gonna count for five points on the box. Brings the rating of this box up. And uh, I will put that one aside. We'll put it in a tube a little bit later. Let's just go through the rest of this roll, see if there is anything else. It doesn't look like it though. So we will go ahead and move on to the next one. All right guys, about three rolls later, I just got one of my absolutely favorite things to find. Uh, I just love finding these. I've only found, I think, two in the series so far and uh, we just got another one here check this out this is an old old Canadian penny and it's 1945 and if you know your Canadian pennies you know that's gonna be a King George the sixth so these are just so cool to find actually on my little uh, Canadian sheet here I just made this up I've been doing a little accounting here so KG six that stands for King George the sixth they go from 1937 up through 1952 and this one is pretty much dead center uh, of that year range 19 45 on that and uh, we're actually gonna get when we get about halfway through the box today uh, We're gonna take a closer look at some of these uh, Canadian finds that uh, I've been having and we actually have this is pretty cool uh, We have this Canadian coin book right here, which we're going to be uh, Putting all of our Canadian finds into and uh, we're gonna see how far we can get with the Canadians as well All right, so we have a pretty interesting role going on right here uh, The first thing that I saw was a date that we've actually already found it is another wheat penny It came out uh, face up like that 1951 Denver uh, like I said, we already have that, and we already have a double of that even, uh, so, so uh, that's just another wheat penny for us. Um, and then we had this uh, Canadian penny right here, which came out like that, and I was like, what the heck, there's no date on this thing. Uh, well, it turns out the date is actually on the other side. It's one of their uh, centennial type of uh, coins right there. It says, uh, I think that's 1952, yeah. So that's, that's uh, a 50 year, yeah, 50 year anniversary of uh, the Queen. So that's sort of an interesting coin to find. I uh, find quite a few of them though. So um, I just thought it was kind of funny because it looked like it didn't have a date. And then we have a 1960 right here, 1960 Denver. It looks like that one's gonna be a large date. Uh, that is something that we're also gonna, we're gonna be looking into in future episodes, the difference between a small date and a large date, 1960. I think that's probably gonna be in the next episode, but I'm, uh, I'm taking all of those aside for now and uh, we'll definitely look at those a little bit later. It doesn't look like there's anything else in this roll though. Uh, so we will go ahead and get on to the next one and pretty soon we're gonna be looking at those Canadians. So we're about 20 rolls in now and we just got another wheat penny. It came out wheat side up once again so we have a little bit of a surprise here. And uh, it, looks, uh, it looks in about average shape I'd say. So we'll go ahead and flip it over and see what we got here. 1942, I know we already have that one off the top of my head. Still cool to find though. We're almost getting into that uh, pre-40s era, which is a lot harder to find wheat pennies from. So that is very cool. Uh, hopefully that trend continues and we get something that's uh, earlier than 1940. I just grabbed this, this uh, crappy looking Canadian coin right here. I'll go ahead and add that to the pile. And uh, we will keep looking through this roll to see if we have anything else in here. Uh, we haven't had a roll that has had two wheat pennies in it yet. It's uh, pretty rare to find something like that, but uh, you never know. So we'll keep looking, but it doesn't look like this is gonna be the roll, guys. So uh, we are about halfway through though, and uh, we're gonna be looking, like I said, at this Canadian uh, album in just a second here. Wow, okay, so just like in previous episodes, guys, you ask and you shall receive. We just got an awesome coin. Check this out. It is a very old, and it was just on the next roll. 1927 comes face up. There you go, and look at the condition on that. I would never guess, if this came up wheat side up, I would never guess that that was a 1920s coin. You can see all of the wheat stalks very clearly. 1927, the face is actually quite a bit more worn than the, uh, than the backside. But uh, it turns out, guys, we already have a 1927 in the book. So uh, that's actually gonna be an extra, and I believe that's gonna be our first pre-1940s um, extra coin right there. So I will actually, I'm probably gonna replace the one that we have, because this one is in much better condition, uh, as you can see right there. But that is awesome, guys. Uh, like I said, those don't come out very often, the, uh, the pre-1940s uh, wheat pennies. So go ahead and look through the rest of this roll real briefly. 
And uh, I think that is going to be it. There's something really disgusting on that. That's why we wear gloves. So just a couple rolls later and we just grabbed another wheat penny here. It came out face up and it turns out that we do already have that one. It's a 1944 Denver, as you can see. Once again, in pretty decent shape. And guys, I just noticed this right here. Uh, this is a quite newer uh, scent right here. It's gonna be 2010 or, or uh, later. So yeah, 2014. Um, and it's just got some excellent toning on it. You can see it as I flash it in the light there. Um, really nice toning on that coin. So I'm definitely gonna pull that one aside and uh, we'll keep looking guys. I'm gonna go ahead and see if there's anything here, but it doesn't look like there is. So we will get into the next roll. All right, so the very next roll had another wheat penny come out face up. If I can grab it here, it is another 1944. It's got some really weird uh, pattern on the front there but the back looks uh, just perfectly fine. This is a very common uh, wheat penny to find, 1944. Um, so I definitely already have that one. It turns out I actually have all of the 1944s, but I had a good feeling about this roll, guys. Uh, you could see some of these edges are looking uh, copper here, so there's a good chance that we could you know, find something else in here. Uh, but no, I don't think so, not for this roll anyway. There was a lot of copper, like I said, but uh, nothing older than 1959, which is what we're looking for. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, so just as we're reaching the halfway point in this box, I just flipped another wheat penny out. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at this one together. Uh, it looks like it's in fairly good shape. I'm gonna guess probably 40s on that one, but uh, we'll go ahead and flip it over and see what we have here. Oh, okay, so it's actually, guys, that is a 1935. Like I said, another pre-40s right there. Um, I think I may have the 35. I'm not exactly sure, though. I think that one comes out a little bit more than most. Um, so let me just flip to the page real quick. Actually, guys, it looks like we don't already have the 1935, so we are actually going to be putting that one in the collection. Uh, we just got another one right there, 19. 35 and it's actually in great shape. This has been a really good box. Okay guys, so like I said, we just reached the halfway point in the box and it is now time to fill in this Canadian collection. So we're gonna take a look at it for here for the first time. It is currently empty. I just recently picked this up online. Uh, there'll be links down in the description below, by the way, if you wanna get one of these for yourself as well. Um, so why don't we go ahead and take a look at it. So here's what it looks like, guys. It's sort of a, a weird setup. I think basically you just pull these things out and then you, you slide the coins in and you just slide it back in. Uh, kind of interesting, definitely not something that I've seen before. And I think there's there's like pieces of paper in between each page as well. But uh, so they're basically there's gonna be 30 pages, or sorry, 30 coins on each page. So what I have, I have it sort of laid out here, did a little bit of accounting, like I said. Uh, so there's gonna be 30 coins on each page and then we're gonna go ahead and mark down how many we get um, on each of these pages. The cool thing, guys, is that I've already separated these into uh, the respective categories that you can find uh, while you're corner hunting uh, the small cents uh, from Canada. So KG5s, those go from 1920 to 1936. Unfortunately, I haven't found any of those. They're extremely hard to find. Um, but I have found a few of the KG6s, uh, including one that we found in today's episode. So we have one right there. That was our 1945. So I'll go ahead and put that down here. Um, so like I said, that's a 1945. And then I have two more in this tube right here. I've, I've actually separated them by tubes. If you take a look over here, uh, these are the tubes of the different coins that we have uh, found coin roll hunting. So we're going to go ahead and dump those out and uh, see what other dates we have. We have a 45, 42, and a 46. So those are three unique coins. They're all going into the collection. And uh, for these other ones, guys, I'm just going to basically put up a, a picture of the coin on the screen so that you can see what it looks like. And then I'll probably just fill it in because, as you can see, I have a ton of these coins. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, fill in this collection as much as I can right now and then I will get back to you on the progress. All right guys, so I just finished up taking all of the Canadian coins that I could and putting them into this book. As you can see, this was our tube of King George sixes and that is completely empty, so all of them went in. This has all of the bird scents as well as the young heads. I think actually most of these are bird scents, but uh, we definitely had uh, some young heads left over. And then here is what is known as the tiara. So that's the tiara variety. Uh, that is the most common that you're gonna find. And then here we have what is called the diadem. Um, you'll see actually in a second, we, we pretty much filled in, I think, every single coin from this variety. And then here we have what is known as uncrowned. So these are actually pretty difficult to find, but let's go ahead and take a look at the book so far. So like I said, from 1920 up through 36, those are King George 5s. We didn't have any of those, but we did have some King George 6s, including the one that we found today. So we have the 1942, the 1945, which I think is the one that we found today, and the 1946. So we got three out of 30 on this page. So not great, but uh, definitely gonna be the hardest to find. Uh, is those oldest ones. 
Now moving on to page number two. So up here would be continuing King George VI, and then when we get into 1953, that's when the young heads start. Um, we didn't have any of the early young heads out of these past six boxes, but we do have uh, the majority of the later years. So uh, they come up, up to 1964. The only one that we're missing from 1958 forward is the 1960, but we have all of the other ones. Now with the 1965, it gets a little complicated. Apparently there is this thing called small bead .5 and uh, large bead blunt five and uh, there's you know all the different variations here i have actually the canadian coin book so you can sort of take a look at what that means but as you can see the differences are extremely small um so it's kind of it was difficult for me to, to you know be able to tell i haven't looked at these coins yet um so i didn't fill in any of the 1965s although i do have a couple and i will show you those in just a second but uh, we didn't fill any of those in Otherwise, uh, we got everything else except for the 1971. So moving on to page three, this one is almost completely full. We got just about every single coin except for the 1977 and 1988. Now, like I said before, the diadem goes from 1990 up through 2002, and we got every single coin in that, so that's pretty cool. Um, but we are missing a few in the tiara age. Now we get into the later years, and actually this, this book is complete. It goes all the way up through 2012. That is when Canada stopped making pennies. So that is why this is actually pretty cool. Um, you know, we're filling up this book in the United States and you can't get pennies in Canada anymore. So I think it's pretty cool. But uh, starting 2003, they started making them uh, looking like this. So that is the older version of Queen Elizabeth. So that's the end of that collection. And if you look down here, I went ahead and put the 1965s that I found uh, in these spots right here, because I'll have to go back and look at those and uh, figure out what they are. But uh, for the totals for this collection, we got three on the first page, 12 on the second page, 28, so almost completed the third page, and then five out of 10 on the last page. So there's 100 coins that would go into this collection, and we got 48 of them. That's pretty easy calculation, 48%. So if you take that 48 out of 100 in the Canadian collection and compare it to the American collection. We have 157 out of 279 at the beginning of this episode and that's 56% complete. That's actually pretty comparable which I think is funny because we're not even supposed to have Canadian coins in our change but we end up getting quite a few of them and uh, we're able to fill out this collection pretty far. I'm sure we'll be over 50% by the time this series ends. So now that we got the Canadian collection filled up why don't we go ahead and get into the second half of this box. Alright guys so getting into the second half of this box it actually took a while to find anything. I think we're about six rolls in, which is pretty crazy, but uh, this roll is looking really good. If you take a look right here, we actually, and I don't think I've ever, I'm not sure if I've ever had this happen, but we just got a second King George on the box, and I don't think we have that one in the collection. So basically within this episode alone, we have doubled the amount of King George sixes we have in our collection, and that's not all, guys. If you take a look here, there's actually another wheat penny in this roll comes out wheat side up and it looks like it might be a little bit older you know based on you know we've been getting mostly uh, nice wheat pennies out of this box let's go ahead and flip it over and see what we got okay so 1940 almost made it before the uh, 1940 mark it's actually right on the mark I'm gonna go ahead and check in the collection to see uh, if we have the 1940 or not I'm um, actually yeah we don't actually have that one so that's awesome guys 1940 goes into the book this has been an awesome box so far we've gotten some old Canadians some Wheaties going into the book and also a 2009 Denver and guess what guys this roll is not quite over yet so let's go ahead and see if we can get anything else out of here um, but you know what it doesn't look like it so uh, we're gonna go ahead and get on to the next one all right guys the very next roll and it looks like we are gonna be pulling a wheat penny out of this one as well just about one-third of the way through the roll and you can see the wheat back there let's go ahead and flip it now and we got a 1952 let's check real guys we don't have that one either I knew we had all of the Denver's in the from 50 up to 58 we already have all of the Denver's but we do not have the 52 we also need the 52 s but that is another one going into the book this box is doing absolutely amazing uh, you know for the position that it's in this is box number six so you definitely think that the uh, fines would be slowing down but this box says no we're gonna keep going keep rolling finding all kinds of good stuff here let's go ahead and look through the rest of this roll just in case it ends up being a two wheat roll but it doesn't look like it's going to be so we'll go ahead and get on to the next one so a few rolls later here and we just grabbed a couple of nice coins here we have a bird scent this is one of those 1967 centennial canadian coins 
And then we also got another Wheat Penny. This is their 1946S. That's I think that was the first one that we found. And uh, it went into the collection, so now we don't need it anymore. I'll just go ahead and put that one to the side then, and we will get on to the next roll. I think we've got about 10 more rolls to go. All right, so sort of rushing towards the end here. I just went through the last nine out of those 10, so we have one roll left. I just found a bunch of common Wheat Pennies, so I'll show those real quick. We got a 55 Denver, which we already have, and then we actually got another 1955 Denver, so there's another one of those right there. And then we also got a 56 Denver, as you can see, and we also pulled out another one of those bird sets, so that's two on the box. And we have one more roll to go. I figured I'd just go ahead and open this last one live, so I'll push some of these coins aside and cr get cracking right into this last roll. Hopefully we get something cool out of it so that uh, you guys can see it live and we can put it into the book. So we'll go ahead and just check it out, see what we have here. Uh, I see some decent copper edges, so we might have a chance at finding something old. Um, it might just end up being like a common wheat penny. There's something old right there, actually, guys. It looks like we do have one. So that, that came out face up, as you can see. That's a 1947. <laughs> guys, we need that one in the book. That is so awesome. It came out of the very last roll, 1947, in pretty good shape. And we got another one for the book. This has been an awesome box uh, for finding wheat pennies and, and also finding... Uh, uh, the uh, old Canadian ones as well. There is a 1960 Denver. I think that's a large date So those are those are a little bit easier to find than the small baits uh, still looking for small baits though And we'll probably get into that in the next episode, but it looks like guys that is the end of it So I'm gonna go ahead and dump these now because that is the final load of pennies and we will go ahead and get into a wrap up. All right guys, so welcome to the wrap up. So starting up here, we have our wheat scents from the 40s and 50s. We got quite a few of those. These are all the extras that didn't go into the book. Uh, we got nine of those, so nine times five points is 45. We actually, for the first time, got an extra of a coin that is in the 10s, 20s, and 30s range. So that's worth 10 points right there. It is that 1927, which we already have in the book, as you can tell, but I'm probably gonna swap that one out because this one is actually uh, in much better shape. So that's an extra 10 points right there. We got two 2009s in addition to the one that went into the book. Uh, if you remember from the, I think the very beginning of the episode, we got a 2009 Denver Professional Life, which ended up in the book right there, as you can see. So that's good. We still have two more to find though. So I'll keep an eye out for those. Uh, we did get one young head that I didn't film because it's in pretty rough shape, but it's just a 1964. It looks like it's been in a parking lot or something, uh, but that is worth five points. And then we got two bird scents, which are each worth five points. And then our list of coins that went into the book is actually pretty crazy over here. Um, four, four common wheat pennies that went into the book, the 46S, 40, 52, and 47. And then we actually had two King George sixes, right? Yeah, I was thinking five. It was definitely six. Uh, King George six, 1945 and 1947. Those are each worth 10 points a piece. So you can see those are pretty difficult to find. And then we also got a 1935 that was worth 10 points that went to the end of the book. All in all, we had 123 points on this box. That's a very good box. So as always, these coin roll hunting placemats are for sale. You can find them on my website at quinscoins.com. I'll put a link down in the description below and you can check it out at the end of this video as well. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to go down below and leave a like. It helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you're new because I post new videos like this every single week. I always bring you along with the hunts and having a good time. And as always, I'm Quinn and this is Quinn's Coins signing out. And I will see you in the next one.